This is the flexion exercise, trying to bend my knee as far as I can. It is not easy and it hurts a lot. Ugh. One. <laughs> In today's video, we're going to be covering week three post ACL replacement surgery. We're going to cover the differences of kind of what's improved and changed from week two and kind of the new things that are occurring in week three. I am in my home office, which is also now my official pain cave. So I'm filming this at six and a half weeks post surgery and I'm on my bike. So spoiler alert, I've gotten a lot better and I'm actually able to use my legs again. So I hope you stick around to see some of that as we cover each you know week to week progress. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. Uh, we're currently covering my ACL replacement surgery and the uh, prehab exercises that I had to do before surgery and now my uh, post-surgery rehabilitation process. Week three is starting out pretty similar to week two. So I'm still working from the bedroom for the most part. I've tried working from my office a couple times and it's just not going well. I've even tried working from the couch again and the couch isn't too bad now, but I just prefer the bed. It's a little more comfortable but having my leg bent and down below my body, below my heart, is leading to a bunch of fluid buildup in the knee. And this is kind of to be expected um, from the ACL replacement surgery itself, and also because I had two additional complications to the surgery. The one being the cartilage damage where they had to drill the holes into the bone to repair that. And the second being that I had at the same time a patella or lateral release done on my kneecap to allow it to float better in my knee so I won't have trouble, hopefully, hopefully, um, I won't have trouble hiking and biking and other things where that's led to knee pain for me for the past couple of years. Week three is kind of a waiting period for me. So one more week to go till I can sleep without the knee brace and I cannot wait. I hate sleeping with that knee brace. It's so uncomfortable. I covered this in the week two video and I can't say it enough. Like it's just, it's so hard to sleep with that stupid brace on it just kind of rubs you the wrong way, literally, no matter how you sleep. Probably the only way you could sleep or it wouldn't really impact you is if you can sleep on your back. But like I said previously, I, I just can't do that. I try and I try and I always end up on my side and I wake up with a bruise or like this dull, you know, awful sensation in my knee in the morning. So one more week to go and I'll be sleeping brace free and man, that will be nice. I can't wait to get a good night's sleep. So one good thing about week three is I'm able to start getting outside a little more. So Lindsay and I have been able to go out to dinner, uh, just get out in the car and go for a drive. You know, the little things that you take for granted that have been really difficult for me for the past couple of weeks, just because I didn't have the strength, the energy, the coordination, the capability to really get out of the house much. I mean, I probably could have, but every time that I did, I paid for it the next day. It was in much more severe pain, a lot more swelling. I was popping um, ibuprofen and, and Tylenol, trying to cut down on the swelling and get the pain under control. Just didn't like it, so figured, you know, no need to rush it. I got plenty of time to recover, but week three is really a big improvement. Slowly improving on my capability to go up and down the steps, which is making it easier to get in and out of the house. And when we do go out, when I get home and that, that night and the next morning, I don't have as bad of a pain sensation that I had in week one and two. So, you know, week three is, is getting there. It's feeling a lot better and I'm starting to feel like a normal person again. At the end of week two, I had my first physical therapy appointment, which was awesome to get that process started, even though I can only do limited therapy because of the non-weight bearing issue right now. So week three is my first opportunity to do these physical therapy treatments at home. So something you should know and make sure it might be obvious to some people, but not all, is that physical therapy doesn't just happen at your therapist's office. It's your responsibility to improve your own body the physical therapist is there to teach you things and to kind of perform those actions and those, those rehabilitation steps in a controlled environment. But you need to do similar, if not the exact same things at home and a lot more frequently than just once a week or however often you're scheduled to see your therapist. I'm scheduled to see the therapist once a week and right now I'm doing that every Friday. And that means that I have the rest of the week to myself and the weekend to do as much rehabilitation as I can. So I talked with my therapist, he gave me a big long list of things that I can do at home and I've been slowly working on doing those every day and most of the time twice a day if I can do it if I'm not under too much pain. 
The first two days of home physical therapy were awful. I mean, super painful. I felt so weak. I've never felt so weak in my life. I couldn't believe that I was struggling so bad to do such basic exercises. It was horrible. It was almost worse than the first time that I attempted them in the physical therapist office. I thought I could do more than I could, and I really just couldn't. So doing basic exercises like quad sets, they hurt so bad. And most of that is due to the fluid buildup in my knee. I've got this big pocket of fluid that bulges out of the outside of my knee, and it just puts all this pressure on the inside of my knee when I'm doing quad sets, but I have to do them. And I've got to push through the pain because if I can't get my quad under control, when the time comes for me to remove the brace and to start weight bearing, I'm not going to be able to walk. And getting your quad control is like number one top priority for the, your initial rehab steps. Along with doing simple quad sets are also the most difficult thing for me, straight leg raises. Straight leg raises were like impossible for me to do the first day at the therapist's office. I could not do them unless he assisted me. And now here I am at home and it's like, okay, do I rely on Lindsay to help me do these? Do I try to push through and do it myself? Can I find a modified way to do them? What do I do? So I took the hardest approach and said, I'm just going to will myself to do this. And the first day of trying it, I failed miserably. I could barely get my leg off the ground. I had to use my own hands to kind of lift my leg up a little bit and it was bending in midair. I couldn't keep it straight because I didn't have enough quad control, but I kept at it. And by the second or third day of actually attempting these, I could almost kind of do it myself. I could get my foot off the ground and that first inch of lifting your foot off the ground, man, that's so hard. It's like your leg weighs a hundred pounds. And then once you get past that little spot, it starts to lighten up and lighten up as you go up. And you know, some of that's the mechanics and physics of your weight distribution of your body as, it, as the angle changes, but some of it's just the physical muscle control that it takes to actually kind of break that static force and, and get it up off the ground. And it was good to be able to see the progression day after day after day of being able to actually do it and finally being able to do straight leg raises myself. All that said and done, all week long of week three, those were super painful. They were very hard. I was like full on sweating and my heart racing by the time I got done. Couldn't believe that such a simple exercise could feel like I had just ran a marathon. It was crazy, but you know, it was using all my concentration and my capability to control my muscles just to lift my leg off the ground and to hold it up in the air for about a count of four or five. Once I was finally able to get the leg off the ground and do that you know, consistently and, and steady, I would try to keep the leg at about maybe like a, I don't know, a 30 degree, 45 degree angle off the ground and hold it for a count of five. So I would literally do one, two, three, four, lower. And I did that count in my head or out loud so I didn't cheat and that I actually kept it up there and forced myself to really use that quad muscle to hold it in position, keep it in a, in a certain spot, and you know do what I needed to do to regain that strength. The other at-home exercises that really gave me trouble still are anything that has to do with working your hamstring. So just simple little hamstring sets and other things like that. Whew. Man, they hurt. It's like somebody's just jabbing a knife or a fork right into the back of your leg and just digging around and and it doesn't just hurt while you're doing the exercises, it hurts for hours afterwards. And I know I need to do them and I know I have to do very controlled movements. So I've been doing the best that I can and trying to get through them and they're not really getting better yet, but that's to be expected. The pain's probably gonna stick around for the next few weeks until I can do weight bearing and actually start to let my leg kind of get used to moving those muscles on its own working them all the time by walking and standing and doing other things like that. Because right now, like, it's kind of like starting from scratch. The muscles just haven't moved. I've got scar tissue build up from where the graft was taken off the hamstring. So that scar tissue doesn't move and bend like your muscles do. Sorry about the lighting if that's messing up the video. I don't know what's going on with my light. But the scar tissue just kind of, kind of, I don't know, causes a lot of problems. And my surgeon warned me about this and so did the physical therapist and they said, you know, just give it time. Don't push too hard. The worst thing you can do is pull your hamstring. If you pull your hamstring, you're going to really mess things up for yourself and you're going to set yourself back. So I've been heeding that word of caution. 
So like I was saying before, one of the biggest struggles I'm having with doing rehab exercises at home, this third week, you know, post-surgery is dealing with that huge amount of fluid buildup in my knee and that pocket of fluid that pops out of the side every time I try to work my quad muscle. It's so bad that I decided to visit the surgeon again and ask him if he could maybe drain my, my knee. And I was really hoping he would. So we scheduled an appointment to see him, drove back up to Tosh, uh, went in to see him and he looked at my knee and he said, yeah, you've got a lot of fluid buildup. It's kind of to be expected because of all the work you had done on your knee and you know, there's risks of draining the fluid and sticking a needle in your knee. And he said, I just don't think it warrants it. Like you're just gonna have to deal with it. And this is the interesting part of that visit. So I was bummed, I was sad. Like I really wanted him to drain it. And unfortunately he decided that it just wasn't worth it. He accidentally dropped my leg and I don't even think he know, knew that he did it. So he was holding my leg without the brace on and taking a look at the knee and massaging around the fluid to see how much was in there. And when he got done, he said, you know, sorry, I'm just, I'm not comfortable with draining the knee. I, I think you just need to give it some more time right now. And then he let my knee go and my whole leg dropped down and oh my gosh, it hurt. It hurt so bad. I mean, worse pain than the day of the surgery. It was awful. And he had walked out of the door kind of at the same time. I don't even think he understood what he did, but it hurt so bad. I almost cried. I almost let out a scream. I mean, it hurt, hurt like so much so that it took me a couple of minutes just to regain my focus and control to be able to put the brace back on and stand up again. And then I hobbled myself out of the doctor's office and back to the car and it hurt all the way home. I mean, a 35, 40 minute drive and I was still in pain when I got home. Took some ibuprofen and stuff and just propped the leg up. Was thinking like, oh my gosh, is this gonna set me back? Am I not gonna be able to do my rehab exercises? This is not good. So anyway, the next day rolled around, I woke up and it was weird. I felt better. Um, I still had all the fluid in my knee, but it didn't hurt as bad. And that crazy pain that I got from where the, the surgeon dropped my knee kind of started feeling better. And when I was doing some of the quad set exercises, I was still getting the puffiness in my knee, but that giant pocket of fluid was not popping out of the side of my knee anymore. So I'm thinking that somehow that shock to my leg where he dropped it and it kind of moved and jerked everything. And I really do think that it like fixed something. I think it allowed some section of the fluid to move in my knee. I don't think it got rid of it, but I think it moved. And now when I do quad sets and leg lifts, it doesn't pop out of the side of my knee as bad as it used to and allows me to have a lot more muscle control and freedom of movement, which is awesome. So what started as an, like one of the most awful things that's ever happened to me since since having the surgery might have been a blessing in disguise. I don't know, because all of a sudden, you know, starting on, you know, Thursday or Friday of week three, I'm able to do quad sets much easier and less pain. I am able to now do straight leg raises by myself with, you know, full control. It hurts and it's hard, but so much better than it was on Monday and Tuesday. I just cannot believe the difference. And it all seems to be related to whatever happened when my leg dropped. And the physical therapist, when I went in that following Friday, he could not believe it. He was like, what happened to that big bulge of fluid in your knee? And I, I told him the story and he's like, well, he said, take it, you know, that's awesome. I'm glad something helped. So I, I'll take it. So at the end of week three, uh, once again on Friday, we headed to physical therapy. We drove again to Saratoga Springs to visit RPT and my physical therapist. And I really like RPT. I gotta say it's very friendly. And every time I've been there, I've been one of very few patients, which I think maybe it's just a good timing uh, being on a Friday and kind of the end of the workday. So I get a lot of personal attention, which is really nice. And I really need it at the beginning of this whole therapy process. So, you know, I'm still on a non weight bearing order. Uh, have to wait six weeks post surgery before I can do weight bearing. So there's not a ton we can do. So we're really just focusing on flexibility, range of motion, and basic muscle control at this point. So last week was the first week of physical therapy and I had very little range of motion. You know, got up to just over hundred degrees and I'm targeting a four to eight week range of, of trying to get up to at least 135 degrees range of motion or flexion of my knee, being able to pull my, my leg in. And I got a long way to go, but this second week, I could not believe the improvement that I had. It was so awesome. I mean, like super awesome. And I think it was all to do with my dedication to doing the physical therapy exercises every single day, 
twice a day as much as I could. And whatever happened when my leg dropped and that chunk of fluid moved out uh, made such a big difference. So now I'm all the way up to 124 degrees flexion and zero degrees extension, which means I can put my leg out totally flat and I am 11 degrees away from my four to eight week goal of 135 degrees for flexion. I'm shocked. Like starting at 90 some degrees, the very first time we did a baseline test and in one week's time being at 124 degrees, that's huge. Like I am just blown away and could not be more stoked about that progress. You know, seeing that type of progress makes all the hard work and effort that I've been putting in all week just so worth it and kind of gives me that little bump that I need to want to continue with the home PT and PT in general. So it's really going well and I, I cannot believe the, imp the improvement and the progress that one week makes. And that pretty much wraps up week three. Um, like I said, at home, not a bunch has changed. Able to get around a little better, you know, kind of just little improvements here and there. Biggest improvement though has been range of motion and the physical therapy progress. Like I am, again, like I said before, just incredibly happy with the improvements that I'm seeing and the gains. My therapist is super happy. The surgeon is super happy to hear about this and things are going really well. I wish I could put weight on the leg. You know, if I wouldn't have had all these extra things done, I should be doing weight bearing ex exercises at this point and I'm actually walking around on it. But I got a long way to go, several more weeks. So I uh, hope you like this video, and if you do, uh, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps out our channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell to stay notified of any future videos. We'll be putting out a video once a week going about the improvements and progress that I'm making each week from my ACL rehab surgery. And eventually, once I can move around a little more, maybe we'll get back into hiking, biking, and all the fun stuff that we used to record. Uh, but we'll definitely get back into that, I promise you. So stick around. For, there's always more coming. And thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. We'll catch you next time.